Across planet internet, self-appointed scientists are filming themselves in action. These internet heroes are doing bizarre experiments, making extraordinary inventions, and creating amazing scientific stunts. We're gathering a team of top science brains to analyze just how they do it, why they do it, and choose the very best. It's science, but not as you know it. So don't even think about trying this at home. Next up, it's time to modify a water gun into a super-sized soaker. This is awesome. This is Mark Rober's epic water pistol. This would be a great way to water the garden if you wanted to cut down some trees. This monster gun measures seven feet long and fires water out at an incredible 272 miles per hour. This thing is eight times the pressure of a fire truck. I so want to play with it. So how do you make a supersized water weapon? Mark got the help of some friends to scale this up from an original toy water gun. He built up the frame from wood and PVA foam, put the internal workings inside, and the whole thing took him about six months. The green container on top is just for show, so he's placed all the weight of the gun in the lower handle compartment. This water pistol gets its firepower from two tanks in the handle. One of them is full of nitrogen gas, the other is full of water. The nitrogen gas is kept at a high pressure in the tank. So when the valve opens, it wants to equalize the pressure with the surroundings. And the only place to go is to the water tank. As the nitrogen crowds into the water tank, it pushes down on the water, but water can't be compressed, it has to go somewhere and the only place it can go is out a tube which connects the bottom of the water tank to the front of the gun. This thing is military grade. Yes, yeah, so let's see the super soaker in a combat situation. It's no contest until he runs out of water. We're in a tranquil forest in Scandinavia. It looks so peaceful in that forest. Until Axel Board from Amazing DIY Projects comes buzzing in on his homemade drone flying machine. To be able to hover just above the ground would be one of the most incredible experiences. We're in Axel's secret science hideout in a secluded forest in Sweden to find out more. It's a large chunk of technology, but it makes me feel closer to nature than I feel than I'm, when I'm walking around the grounds. And it's also, it is a magic feeling. As soon as you leave the ground, you don't have to be high up to have the sensation of flying. I love it. And the internet just loves his creative capers, with over a half a million of us watching his forest flight. My family knew that I was doing this. Uh, they know I'm passionate about creating stuff. It's just exciting to, to put your mind to something and see what would, comes out of me when I focus on a certain area, when I uh, wanted to build my own flying device. This is what came out of that experiment. It looks complicated, but it's actually quite simple and very smart how he's constructed this multi-rotor. To reveal its secrets, who better than a smart scientist? It's over to you, Amy. Axel has 76 rotors on this contraption, and each of them are powered by an electric motor. The blades of each rotor are designed so that it creates a low pressure zone on the top of the blade and a high pressure zone on the bottom of the blade as it spins. This generates lift. He's programmed half the rotors to spin clockwise and the other half to spin anti-clockwise. And that's because if all the rotors span in the same direction, the whole copter would twist. Because he has so many rotors, he's got five flight controllers. So there are three transmitters on this side, and there are two more on this side. These are circuit boards that control how fast each rotor spins. When Axel wants to move forward, he pushes his joysticks forward, and the flight controllers increase the speed of the rotors in the back. That pitches him forward and aims some of the thrust behind him, moving him forward. To turn his craft, Axel increases the speed of some of the motors traveling in one direction and decreases the speed of motors traveling in the opposite direction. The combined weight of Axel and his vehicle is 330 pounds or 150 kilograms. The thrust, though, is 600 pounds or 270 kilograms. 
This means that if one of the five flight controllers goes out during the flight, he'll still have enough thrust to keep him from crashing to the ground. So many people are trying to make a manned multi-copter, and then some dude in the middle of the woods just makes one, and it works. Amazing. The only altitude limit for this vehicle is the air itself. If you get too high in the air, it's too thin, and you won't have enough thrust. So Axel flies this thing basically as high as he feels comfortable falling. I've been watching the footage that I've taken myself when I do flybys, and it looks really weird. And it also feels exactly that weird, because you're sitting in a sort of relaxed, I don't care, I'm like the, the judge position with your body, but you're still like doing the most hee hee fun thing that you can do. So it feels weird, but also magic. It, it really is like someone is holding you in the air and, and just taking you where you wish. Controlling the craft is, is pretty straightforward. It's just like the radio control counterpart, except for that I have uh, opted for having the left joystick for throttle only. And uh, the right stick is both, both yaw and you have roll and you have the pitch on this axis. And I have small, small pads here to, to rest my, my hands on so that I can work with my small, small movements with my um, smaller muscle groups rather than using my whole arms to, to control it. It's completely uh, ready to control this craft. So I can sit with this control in my knee from uh, inside there and fly the craft. But typically, of course, uh, I want to sit in the craft myself because it's so fun to fly. Not at all difficult compared to flying remotely because it's easy to get disorientated when you fly a radio control drone. If it's too twist, it can be difficult to, to know that if you're looking at it, everything is backwards. But here, the right is always to the right and the left is always to the left. So I actually find it easier to fly it sitting in it uh, compared to having the uh, transmitter in my knee sitting in there and try to fly it from a distance. At number two, it's outrageous axe legend Alan Pan with his hot mod. Alan is back, and this time he's brought a Kung Fu master and given him the ability to punch fire. That is awesome. These modified flamethrowers are lighting up the internet with over two million views. This is so cool. Punch activated flamethrowers. Can you make flames come out of my hands? Sure. Here we go. I make my own sound effects. Let's see how Alan turns punches into flames. To make his fire fists, Alan uses a butane torch. The butane is kept under high pressure and then released past an arc lighter. The arc lighter creates a spark of electricity, igniting the butane gas, creating these awesome fireballs. The clever engineering here is that these devices only shoot out their flames when he's throwing a punch. To make this happen, Alan has used accelerometers. An accelerometer is a sensor that can detect the change in acceleration that results from a punch. To make sure that the gloves only fire when intended, Alan has calibrated them to sense punches. A punch has a very simple characteristic. It's a fast acceleration followed by a fast deceleration. So they only fire when they have a large forward motion followed by a very fast deceleration. Great stuff. Unless you're Alan's cameraman. Oops. 